Don't ask for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for me. <laughs> We're casting a bell today, and uh, I've been wanting to do this for quite some time since almost my first casting. I thought a bell would be a cool thing to cast, and um, we're finally there. Finally, going to make it today. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do. I'm going to try to do this in two videos. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to try to do one video, but produce two out of. Anyway, one video will be um, a really short, non-verbal or very minimal verbal kind of thing. Just take you through it real quick and show you stuff. The other version I'm going to try to do uh, at the same time is I will do my normal babbling and I will ramble on about stuff. Not ramble on. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So if you're watching this video and you wish I would shut up, it'll be linked down in the description, the other one. Alrighty, so here is my bell pattern. Um, we're going to ram up this thing in the, um, in the cope. So kind of like that. And uh, once we get that done, we'll move it. We'll turn it over, and we'll do the uh, we'll do the drag. Alright, I don't know if you just saw that. Um, I'm putting this feeder on here just to, um, it's not really even a feeder, it's more of a vent. It's more of a spyglass. It's more of a thing for me to look and see if the metal is actually coming up to the top. You'll notice that my sprue, um, the top of my sprue, is just barely above the top of my box. It really is just above it by maybe a half an inch. Uh, so, uh, the intent here was to get as tall as tall as I could get in here, get um, weight going down so that I would have plenty of, not weight, but I'd have gravity helping me with self-leveling and getting the metal up into this riser here, this vent, this viewfinder, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's really not big enough to be a, a feeder, and it's huge for a vent. So <laughs> anyway, that's, what, uh, that's what's going on there. Let me finish pulling it up. You know, it's really amazing. If I put my finger on these things, I don't hit them. If I don't have my finger on there, I will hit them every single time. <laughs> I guess the fear of hitting your hand is uh, outweighs the, I don't know, the notion that you shouldn't be driving those things down into the bottom. Okay, I'm going to turn this thing over, and uh, we're going to just turn it over 90 degrees. I'm going to blow out the sprue. I'm going to blow out that vent. Um, well, I'm not going to blow out the vent too much because the pattern's still in there, but get that cleaned out of there, and we will turn it all the way over and put the uh, drag on it on the upside down, and we'll ram up the inside of the bell, um, and then we're going to have to, when we before that's all done and done, we'll have to clean out the, uh, the sprue again. Okay, and our sprue should be somewhere, <laughs> I'm hoping, right around here. I guess we're going to have to uh, blow it out from the other side when we get it done.
Okay, we now we got to flip the whole blooming thing over. <laughs> ay ay ay. I think we'll just rotate it on its side again. Move the board over to the, the drag side. Rotate it again, and we can hopefully pull that uh, cope off there and get our uh, sprue cleaned out. We need to get our runners cut and gates cut into the uh, into the uh, drag. So let's, uh, first things first, we'll rotate this guy over. There's half of it. You can't see any of that, can you? All right. So we need to get these things, this the uh, cope off, get the uh, sprue cleaned out. I think I'm going to measure because I didn't see it. Uh, I'm just going to measure my where I think I am here from the edge of the box, like five and five and three quarter by two and three quarter. That'll give me a ballpark for figuring out where to put the sprue or the gates or the runner. The runner. So first first, let's see if we can't get this guy off of here. So far, so good. Now then, I said, two and three quarter. And five and three quarters, so right about there should be the sprue. I'm going to be very, very sad if I missed, just to make sure. Okay, now for the gates coming into this thing, we should be able to take the, the bell off of here now. Just like that. And I am going to gate into the bottom of the bell. Um, so, right into this area right here, that's where we're going to get it. You see how thin that is. So what that means is I'm going to probably go with a wide, pretty wide gate. I'm going to go with two gates, fairly wide, so I can get mo a lot of volume through there. That's my, uh, my hope, and I'm going to go, oh golly, I'm going to come right about here. And we're just going to cut that guy right there. And I think we'll do the same thing sort of over here. I think that's it. Now, if you haven't figured it out yet, 
what I'm going to do, first of all, the gates, I'm putting the gates in where I put them because it'll be so much easier to clean it off and I won't be grinding on the face of the bell. Um, so I'm hoping that putting in there, I can just trim them off the bottom and be good. The other thing that's going to happen here, which is really probably bad, <laughs> we'll find out though, is every other bell caster in the world, especially guys who know what they're doing, who have been doing this for hundreds of years, pour from the top. They pour in through little pencil sprues a lot of times, and they pour this so they have a lot of little sprues coming in, and the metal will flow down and then come over the top of the bell. And that's how they pour their bells. And clearly it works. It's been working for centuries that way for these guys. Um, I, I, who's, to compl <laughs> who's to argue with them? Well, me, I guess, because I'm going to pour down the sprue through these gates and then we're going to let the metal rise up, seeking its own level, which will be the top of that uh, fill basin, and hopefully come up through that little spyglass thingy that I put here, and we'll be able to see that metal come up through it. So, that's the intent here. That's what we're going to try to do. Okay, we got our sprue located. Um, harder than I thought it was going to be. I guess it, I must have really packed a bunch in there. So now, if you've ever watched a bell maker put letters on a bell, you can't count. You can't put them on the pattern because you pull the pattern out. Unless they were like, I guess like that, you might be able to pull it off. But if they're going to be on the sides, you're just going to be dragging your letters down through the sand. So we're going to take this logo that uh, my wife created for us. My initials P, hers is L, and that's our last name, M. So, pretty cool. It's a Rocky Mountain with a sunset, and it's kinda neat. I think she did a great job. So, what we're gonna do is we're going to, <laughs> we are going to live dangerous here. We are gonna try to talc this up as best we can. because I don't want that thing sticking. And this, hopefully, is cut the same profile as my bell. So I'm hoping I could just lay this thing in here and sort of press it into the sand. I don't know if that's gonna work or not, but that's what I'm gonna try. Okay, we're there. And I probably just pressed it in way too far. Yeah, maybe not. We'll see what happens. See if we get us a uh, logo on the side of our bell. All right, I got sand blown out, sand blown out, sand blown out. Oh yeah, yeah, nerve-wracking. This is such a huge hunk of sand. I'm just, it weighs so much. See if we can't get it set on there. I am not going to do a trial close. I realize probably a bad, bad thing, but I'm not going to do a trial close. That is just too heavy to be picking it up and carrying it around and hoping it doesn't collapse on me. It's melted some metal. Oh, 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 oh. oh man, it's taking it fast. That's a good sign for me. Oh, man, I think we got it. I 
I was afraid that with that uh, those small gates, those thin gates, and that thin surface, that area that I was going into the bell, that this thing would feed really slow. Um, it fed really quick, really quick. Came up through there nicely. Um, a little shrinkage there. We'll see what happens, but uh, I think we did pretty good. We'll open it up in a minute here. Well, what well, thank you. Shall we uh, lift this thing up and see what we got? This is uh, my basin's hard. That's hard. We'll assume the rest of it's hard. Uh, moment of truth here. Well, I think it goes all the way around. I got a rim all the way around there. Look at that. We got us a bell. <laughs> we got us a bell. Let me get it pulled out of here and cleaned up. All right, this is, uh, I am stoked. I am so happy. This. <laughs> I cannot believe that this actually worked. Now, let me just show you some things before you, uh, before we clean it up and I let you hear it ring. I'm going to make you sit to the very bitter end. First of all, you see that sprue? You see where it came in on the, uh, the runner? I missed. I missed, but I, but I got enough of it that it got, it flowed in there. Half a sprue half of this tiny little sprue, and you saw how quickly it poured, how quickly it filled, came up to the top, and it filled everything. Half of that little bitty sprue did that. First thing, okay? My bad, I can't, apparently I need to go back to grade school and learn how to use a uh, measuring stick. I would say a ruler, but I get in trouble with my friends down in Australia because they say there's only one ruler, and she sits in England. So I guess a rule. <laughs> anyway. There it is. Let me get it cleaned up. Let me show you this too. You see that? Oh, okay, let's see if I can get that on there. Look at that. Just like the big boys, man. Just like the big boys. I am so stoked. I didn't mention this at the beginning, uh, but I'm going to show you this. So this bell, you're probably wondering, well, what the heck is a shape like that? Look at how flat, short and flat that is. I melded it over after this, that bell over there, out of the movie True Grit. Um, <laughs> funny scene in there, but they stop. He stops right on the bell for some for some reason. He stops on the bell. So I don't know what that is, but that's the shape of this bell. And there's why my, instead of having a B, I have my logo on the side. Let me get it cleaned up. We'll ring it. We'll see what it sounds like. <laughs> All right, I lied to you. <laughs> I did cut off the, uh, the gates coming in. And I wanted to show you this. Uh, this is why I, I brought it in from the, the rim of the bell, because that's all, I just took a hacksaw. That's all I did with those two guys right there. Took a hacksaw, chopped them off, and you can see how much cleanup I've got now. Hardly any. Uh, it came, it's, it was a great place to come in. Uh, I don't have to, I, if I if I had come in from the side or something, I would be grinding all that down to the contour of the bell. This is gonna be just a flat grind, smooth, boom, done. Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring, bring up is this whole idea of how this thing filled. And you can see the oil, um, marks on here from my old Petro, my recycled Petrobon that I'm using. Uh, it, uh, it's beautiful, I guess. <laughs> but I think what happened here, and I couldn't, you can't really see it, but when I did this one, this precursor to a bell, which I'll link at the end of the video, if you want to see that. When this thing filled, we could see the whole open surface. We could see the, the outside rim. Uh, and we saw it, and it, you could see it was filling in a circular motion. Even though this one, just like the bell, had two end gates on it uh, that were perpendicular to each other. They weren't coming in from, you know, like both of them coming in on one side and causing it to swirl. They both kind of came in this way um, and met, and then it still, the metal just started to, it filled this pattern just like that, and I see these same markings on this bell, so I'm assuming that that's what happened, is it fills it in a circular motion. Now, Let's get it cleaned up. All right, here it is in all of its glory. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What do you think? Here we go. 
not a lot of sustain, but not an entirely unpleasing sound. So, finally, I've been wanting to do this for over a, for a year at least. Pretty happy. Next version, this will not be my last bell. I'm hooked. <laughs> Next version will be bronze, and uh, we're going to do a, a copper copper tin alloy. I think 8020 is the stuff to use, so that's what we're going to try to do. Anyway, oh yeah, did it. <laughs> you guys have a great, great day.